Hello, and welcome to another riveting chapter from our book, Guide to Public Speaking. Today, we will be covering chapter 16. Chapter 16 begins in tab 8 and begins on page 443, if you would like to follow along for this presentation. Alright, so the deal behind this outfit that I have on is uh, I wore it to a murder mystery dinner. I could also wear it to an 80s theme party. I might wear it for New Year's. This would be the best. This dress is legit straight out of the 80s. Silk covered in beads and sequins. Can you... It has shoulder pads still in it. And I bought it from Goodwill and they charged me $25 for it. Who in their right mind is going to spend $25 on this dress from the 80s that smells like an old person? It smells like a nursing home. That's what it smells like. It smells like somebody went through their parents' house and <laughs> after they passed and donated it because they were like, who wants this? Nobody. Good news is, is uh, a few months ago I did not fit in this dress <laughs> but I fit in it again so yay me but I'm gonna stand up and show you this dress and you can already see some of the sequins on the dress but let me show you this dress in its entirety as much as I can being home by myself all right see check out all of the sequins and then there's even beading all the way down here and the back Boom! Like, I don't, I don't think you can get any more 80s than what I have on right now. So, my top knot. Well, it's not as straight as it was, but it's just for the video. <laughs> hey guys, you like my ceiling? Okay. Last chapter. <laughs> Girl problems, right? So, last chapter we're going to cover is chapter 16, which happens to cover speeches for special events. Whoa! Weird, you guys are about to do a ceremonial speech on Monday. Mm -hmm. I'm getting my sass on right now. This dress has some magic powers. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even open it up. I thought I did. My bad, my bad. So, what kind of speech is typically given at a funeral? This could be my funeral dress, too. Maybe I should go to the, my, the next funeral I go to wearing this dress. Anyway, A, commemoration, B, eulogy, C, tribute, or D, inspiration. The answer is B, eulogy, since nobody's here to talk to me. Oh, I was going to go set up out my bar, but there's just, like, not enough room for my laptop and this because my old videos which Katie Kimbler has found are uh, from my laptop. So the quality's horrible, but I'm still really funny, right? Um, so yeah, it just was not gonna work out. Sorry guys, I'm just stuck at the dining room table. This is my life though. I sit at the dining room table all day, every day when I'm not working at the school or working at Gap or driving back and forth between SMC and Ivy Tech. Look, my little top knot's like pulling my head around. <laughs> Sorry, distractions. My little, my little widow speak. Boop. I've always had that. I could be like a villain in a movie or a villainess. <sighs> I don't know what's wrong with me. So, what is the creative process for special occasion speaking? This is going to be the same process for all four speeches, so we're going to go over it once, and then in all the other chapters, we're going to skip over it. 
Because I just feel like a freaking record that's broken. So, you have the starting, uh, you have five little elements, starting, researching, creating, and presenting, and then they're each broken down a little bit more. So when you start, first you determine the purpose and type of your speech. From there you analyze your audience, and from there you focus on your central idea. For researching, you research your speech. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? From there you create, such as creating your outline. From there you present, where you and you practice your speech before you present. And finally you listen and evaluate. Evaluate your special occasion speech. What are special occasion speeches? First, we have our speeches to celebrate, and these um, honor or highlight a person, group, place, or event. And they're appropriate for weddings, anniversaries, retirements, birthdays, etc. You guys get the idea. And also, the speaker should praise the subject and, and adhere to expected customs. So, when I, my best example I have for this would be. Um, wedding speeches the maid of honor speech is always sappy and everybody gets teary-eyed and goes oh meanwhile the best man speech is second to lighten the mood and everybody busts up laughing my i don't know if i told you guys a story i mean if i have already bear with me but if not here you go so First, my sister presented her maid of honor speech, and we got all teary-eyed and whatnot, but partially because her mom had died. Then, my brother-in-law, Adam, the one who lives with us, he goes to SMC too, by the way. So if any of you are in a class with Adam Trowbridge, you can taunt him. Ask me, ask me anything, and I can give you stuff to make fun of him with. But don't tell him about this video. Okay. Um... His, his speech was funny. It really lightened the mood after Kayla made us all frickin' frackin' cry. And then, uh, Dave's brother Michael, who lives in Colorado, he presented as well. And his opening line, I would like to thank all the grandparents here for their explicative, imagine what it said, because without you guys, none of us would be here to celebrate this wedding. So I'm sure you can figure out what he said. So my family is kind of a bunch of prudes and was like, but everybody else is busting up laughing. But that might have helped because we had an open bar. <laughs> okay, true story, story time. Open bar, 300 people. Drank them out of Bud Light. I didn't, I don't drink beer, that's disgusting. But, holy moly, that was a lot of free booze flowing. But it's at the Waterford, down 933 in Roseland. Friggin' fantastic, awesome. And we got a uh, block rate, group rate on our hotel rooms. So, everybody just spent the night and then it was a giant after party. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> Speeches to commemorate, these pay tribute to and or remember persons, a group, a place, or event. Um, think of like Memorial Day presentations that occur for like parades and whatnot, paying tribute to fallen soldiers and wars past. Uh, these also reside more in the past, the present. Okay, if you look at slide 9 for chapter 16, resides more in the past, present, or future. not in the past, present, or future, where is it occurring? Are you serious? What, what, a parallel universe, maybe? I, explain that to me. Explain. Also, the speech's focus can touch audiences for speeches to commemorate. We also have speeches to inspire. These are set out to stir, motivate, or encourage the audience. Um, my biggest, best example to use for you guys because of your primary age group would be a high school graduation speech. But soon to be, eventually, right? 
a college graduation speech. Ah, isn't that so exciting? Um, examples include commencement, keynote, inaugural addresses, or even sermons. And audiences' needs are the main consideration for these types of speeches. So when you're graduation, you're all hyped up, ready to go, and you need those words of motivation to get out there and get a job and be an adult. Adulthood's not as awesome as it seems, by the way. I got married and then I got bills. <laughs> and a job that I don't get to just spend my money on myself anymore like I did for the... I've had a job since I was 16 and like all the way through law school, like till I was 25. And all that money that I earned, it was just fun stuff for myself. But now I have to like pay my cell phone bill and my Jeep payment and car insurance. Like where did all this stuff come from? Now I realize why my parents weren't just like every time I asked for 20 bucks, like, you want, you want what? Real life. There are also speeches to entertain, and the idea here is to have a general goal to amuse, delight, and engage your audience. And it's often given at banquets, award dinners, and uh, roasts. They're generally cheery, playful, light, and optimistic as well. So how do you write a special occasion speech? Easy for this class. Follow the outline in the rubric that I gave you. So first you need to determine the occasion or the purpose of the occasion. What is the purpose of the event? What are the requirements? What am I expected to say? And who will be in the audience? Well, luckily for you guys, I gave you the requirements for your speech and then you got to choose one of the six options and tell me who you're gonna present about. And you know that your classmates are gonna be your audience members. No randos thrown into the audience. So, and also determining the purpose of the occasion, uh, consider if anybody's going to be introducing you. No. But you guys know your order. I should email that out, huh? Yeah, probably should do that. Today's going to be like a giant grade day. I don't think I'm going to get any like study stuff done. Where are you going to be presenting? You guys know that you're going to be in the classroom, you know the layout of the classroom, so you guys are ready and set up for that as well. Yes, there are going to be other speakers. For those of you who volunteered to present Monday, again, I'm going to email out that list. This dress brings out the sass. I feel like I should go party. Psych. Who has time for that? And then also, how long are you going to present? Your ceremonial speeches are two to three minutes. Um, something I didn't cover in class that you're going to want to know. I give you two minutes to three minutes and 30 seconds so that if you go over, you have time to wrap things up. If you go 3 minutes and 30 seconds to 4 minutes, you lose 5% of your grade. Anything over 4 minutes, you lose 10%. So the goal is to stay in your time limits. Um, if you're under time, a minute 30 to 2 minutes, you lose 5% of your score. And then anything under a minute 30, you lose 10%. Additionally, please keep in mind that as long as you give it the good old college try on this speech, and I can see that... Your outline's done, you've done your research, but when you got up there, like, <sighs> you were so nervous, everything just fell apart, and nothing went according to plan. As long as I can tell that you tried, you cannot get worse than a C on a presentation. So please don't freak out. This is your first, your first graded presentation, only 100 points. I have faith in you guys, you're gonna do great. Also clarify the type of special occasion you're going to be presenting for, whether it's a toast or a roast, an introduction, an award presentation, or maybe even acceptance. Maybe you're, an ex you're accepting a Grammy. Maybe I should make that an option. Maybe you're accepting an award. Like maybe one of you wants to like go on Broadway, or maybe one of you wants to like make your own album, and maybe get a Grammy for it someday. That'd be cool. Note to self. Maybe you're doing a eulogy or a tribute, a speech of inspiration, or an after-dinner speech. Let me say something about those after-dinner speeches. Keep them frickin' frackin' short and sweet. Why? Because while you're rambling on, we're all thinking about a frickin' food coma. So, if you're gonna do an after-dinner speech, short and sweet. Mm-hmm. Truth. Also, analyze your audience. 
Um, consider the beliefs, attitudes, values, all these go into their uh, cultural and religious backgrounds. Uh, personal traits, psychological traits, and their social traits as well. Also, you want to focus on the central idea. So basically make sure that you don't go off on tangents like I always do. I heard a truck go by and I listened, but it wasn't Diesel, so I knew it wasn't Dave. Mm -hmm. Oh, but he said he's probably staying at work till 5 and it's 3.38. Just do me, doob. That's why I'm doing his favorite, because I'm home more often. But I don't have, like, a full-time job, so I'm home all freaking time. <laughs> so anyway, focusing on your central idea, don't go off on tangents like I just did. Um, draft your working uh, main points and a working outline for this type of speech. Be sure to look at those outline samples I gave you. Make sure you use complete sentences. It includes subpoints as well. And um, derailed. Research your speech as well. Uh, depending on the type of speech you give, your research may be personally reflective. Additionally, you may need to research the history of an award and its recipient if you're giving an, an award to anybody. And finally, consider special issues and materials needed for your speech. Some of you, if you're doing an inspirational speech and it's a graduation speech, I had a few of these last semester because of my dual enrollment students, which was kind of cool, but um, they had caps and gowns from their older siblings and would bring them in and then use them for their inspirational speech to kind of help set the mood, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, I was thinking of other ones that people did. Some people just had like a picture of the person receiving the award behind them. Stuff like that. Anything like that. Totally works. Ooh, I even had a Miss Congeniality from like pageants. Yeah. She was pretty cool. And I like that she brought in like her pageantry stuff. I, I have never been enrolled in a dance class. So those of you who have seen my dance moves, you, you definitely can tell that I've never taken a dance lesson. And I never got into like pageantry stuff or anything. I was just like, I don't know. She did put me in gymnastics. And uh, this girl can't do a cartwheel. No. I took, um, oh, I was in soccer for a few years. I was the kid who just sat down in the field and picked at the dandelions and Made a wish. I wish I could go home. It was just game were over. Can I have a snack? <laughs> Those are still my thoughts. Not much has changed. All right, so creating your outline, as we discussed in one of the previous chapters, to type, determine the type of organizational strategy you're gonna use, whether it's chronological, top goal, spatial, blah, blah, blah. We covered that in an early ch earlier chapter. Also, practice your speech. Woohoo! I have said this probably 20 times, and I'm going to probably say it at least 20 more. The biggest tip I can give you is to rehearse your speech so that you're well prepared. And as long as you have most of your information memorized, you can focus on other things about your nerves instead of blanking on your information. Because when the time comes, you're going to remember it. And if not, you have your outline. And that'll help spark your memory, and then you'll remember. Um, eye contact, eye contact, eye contact. Make eye contact with your audience, folks. Again, no ceilings, no walls, no scanning above the heads. Look at them. Look. Am I scary? You guys aren't here to respond, so no, I'm not. I'm charming and delightful. Evaluate your special occasion. Be sure you have covered the speech's necessary parts. So for you guys, make sure that you've covered everything in the rubric. Make sure you include at least one quote for your ceremonial speech outline. Be sure you have crafted an appropriate speech for the occasion, making sure it's relevant. And finally, be sensitive to your audience's needs. 
So what are the types of special occasion speeches? There's the eulogy or tribute. The usual the eulogy is usually presented upon a person's death. That's morbid. While a tribute commemorates lives or accomplishment, accomplishments of people, groups, institutions, or events. There's also speeches of introduction where you introduce a speaker who's going to present. So last semester we had Dennis Archer come and people did research about him and gave us some brief facts for a few minutes about his accomplishments and why he's relevant to the area and pretended to introduce him before he came to speak on campus. There's also toasts and roast. Toasts are a ritual, ritual. I should do some of those jaw stretching exercises. But anyway, toasts are ritual expressing honor or goodwill to a person, institution, group, or event that is punctuated, punctuated by taking a drink. I feel like I should have a wine glass of milk and cookies. So let me eat me at you guys. Roasts are humorous tributes to a person. Uh, turn on Comedy Central. My brother-in-law's home. I hope he's gonna think I'm crazy talking to myself. Maybe I can finish before he comes inside. Uh, we also have speeches of award or presentation. So maybe you're accepting an award, or maybe you're presenting an award to some an award to somebody else. Um, explain why you are giving the award, or explain the award itself, and compliment and recognize all nominees. Highlight achievements of the recipient. Be sure to be brief and practice the physical presentation of, of the award. There's also the speech acceptance uh, where you're receiving an award. So somebody's giving it to you. So be prepared, be respectful and heartfelt, be appropriate for the occasion and also thank those responsible for the award. Uh, thank those who contributed to your success as we see on all award shows and show emotion or pride. I'm so excited. I, first and foremost, I have to thank God, uh, my parents, my managers, my producer, um, everybody with all their behind the scenes work. I, I just never thought this day would come. I've worked so hard and I have all of you to thank for it. Thank you to my fans. You guys are fantastic and I couldn't do this without you. Was that good? Is this like an award accepting address? Can I wear it on the red carpet? Maybe if I was in the 80s. After dinner speeches, like I kind of mentioned, um, start prepping for these early, make sure it's tailored to the occasion, be appropriate, and also be focused and structured. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, short and sweet because of food comas. I'm not thinking about you, I'm thinking about my bed. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm thinking about you and how you need to finish speaking so I can go pass out with my food coma. Uh, be dynamic and cheerful for your after dinner speeches. Know your time limit, limit, practice, and be creative and don't do stand up. Speeches of inspiration. Um, these generally motivate, encourage, move, or arouse an audience into a positive manner. Select a, an appropriate topic, theme, or subject that reflects the expectation, mood, and tone of the speaking event. Um, be sure to use your wow statement for your conclusion. And finally, we're going to finish with one more question. A speech to pep up a basketball team before a big game is an example of A, tribute, B, introduction, C, inspiration, or D, presentation. So to pep up the basketball team, whoop, whoop, with a pep rally. Sorry. Sassy dress. 
Uh, we're going for an inspirational speech. The answer is C. But that's all I have. I hope you guys really enjoyed these videos and actually watched them, by the way. I'm not posting a Moodle quiz. I don't have time for that today. So if you guys need it, like, your responsibility to watch these <clears throat> because uh, it's, you know, important information that's really relevant to uh, you presenting on Monday. Bye.